Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Unstoppable. On today's episode, we have Renee Washington. Renee P. Washington is a former Division I, Division III, I'm sorry, a former Division I, three-time All-American. I got excited. I have an All-American on. Three-time All-American soccer player, working as a sports reporter, an anchor, a model, small business owner. She's a motivational speaker. She's an author, and she's a friend of mine. Welcome, Renee, to the Unstoppable program. So glad to have you here. Thank you for having me, and I'm happy to be here. And I, I'm glad to join your show because you joined mine actually way back when it first got started. Which that's I didn't right. Know. That's right. <laughs> we were we were talking, guys, before we jumped on when we met, and it's like I can't remember not knowing her. I don't even know how we. I don't know. Yeah. But in 2019, you were on my show, so that just gives you a little context for those. Yeah. Listeners. Been at stuff. least a few years. Yeah, and it took me a couple years to get you on mine because you're so busy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> all good. I yes. But you know what you do, and I, I think it's phenomenal. And I just wanted to share your story and all of it. I I don't know. Um, talk to us. So you played Division One soccer, and you're a three time All American. And who you played for Lehigh, right? So I played for LaSalle and I coached LaSalle. at Lehigh. Okay. So I know okay. the L's confuse a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but yes, I, I was a big, I mean, soccer and sports have always been in my life, you know, and I was yeah. fortunate that as I was going through the recruiting process, I was looking for a school that I felt like aligned with the most with who I am and somewhere I could, honestly, I just wanted to go somewhere I could play. I loved playing. I Growing up, played all the time. I'd play in the backyard, in the living room, you know, whenever and wherever I could play, I was I was playing soccer. So I just wanted to go to a college I could play and and be a part of a um, culture that was changing and a winning program. And at the time, they were like a 500 program when I came in. I was not expecting anywhere near the experiences, success, achievements that I had. But I'm just so thankful because it honestly gave me a whole renewed look at life about just what's possible. Like that's not even something I went into thinking, oh, I want to be an All-American or I want to reach the NCAA tournament or I want to win. Cha I mean, you always want to win championships when you play, right. but right. I didn't know what was possible. Um, so it just allowed me to like, I feel like looking beyond soccer and beyond my playing career, just realize there's more that's possible mm -hmm. and just how big things really are compared to what we may be thinking. You know, I went in very small minded. I just want to play. I just want to be a part of a good program. But what was possible was way bigger than that. You know, I was sure. telling myself short. I was, I had no idea all the doors I could even open to this day because of those opportunities. So it's, it's been a, a big part of who I am and I'm just really thankful for it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I turn on TV one day and I don't even know what I'm watching. And I see this young lady sideline reporting. And I said, wait a minute, it's my friend. That's Renee. How did you break into Now you're a sideline reporter for who? I think you've been on all the networks, right? So, so I do a little bit of everything. Um, okay. So with the MLS for the Philadelphia Union, I'm a game day host. So I help with their pregame, halftime, and, and postgame shows as, as one of the anchors for that. Okay. For ESPN, I do sideline reporting for college football, um, which actually is getting started in a couple of weeks, which is exciting. Um, and also for soccer, for men's women's soccer, I do like color commentary and I'm up in the booth for that. Okay. And then for Fox, I'm actually growing with Fox Sports out of D.C. and doing um, now that things are slightly opening back up, I'll be doing even more around the Wizards and the Mystics wow. um, as a reporter with them. So I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm doing a little bit of everything. You don't ever know which state I'm in, but I'm all yeah. over. <laughs> but that's great, though. And I think I saw you in one of the college uh, games I was watching. How did you break into broadcasting? Um, uh, African-American woman breaking into broadcasting. I know I got a lot of young women, especially black women, listen to this program. I have a granddaughter that might be interested in something. How did you break into that? How did you get into broadcasting? Uh, persistence, faith, just just being able to honestly take the tools I had to try to show that I was an asset to someone else's yeah. company. You know, I actually didn't even study broadcasting. I was telling you my path is very different. My background um, was in public relations with a double minor in Spanish and psychology. Okay. That's everything that I, you know, I, I was studying. My internships was all around PR. My grad degree from Lehigh um, was in educational leadership. You know, everything I was studying was pointing in different directions. <laughs> and I was going through the process of playing and then coaching college soccer and doing PR work and just slowly figuring out what I did and did not like. And I recognized that I don't like sitting 
at an office desk Monday to Friday eight to five. I don't like the monotony of like every day being the same and that routine. Sure. I like the adrenaline rush. I like being sure. a, able to tell stories and create content. And then PR, I was creating content. It was just different types of content. Yeah. So in working in social media management, writing press releases and articles and things, I started realizing like, these are some aspects of what I do like, this is what I don't like. What does that look like in a career? And so I took a leap of faith. I had a um, full-time first assistant coach job that I was offered and I had an internship that I was offered and I took the internship (laughs) and the internship led to my first full-time job. And honestly, I've just been scratching and clawing my way uh, from there of just trying to take advantage of any opportunities, which is why I do so much to really just build and and grow in this career. So it was not something where I was like, ah, I think I want to be a reporter. And then ding, I just happened. It took years. It took years to even get the courage to pursue being a reporter, let alone the time it took me to make that jump, you know? So yeah, yeah. it's been years of doing what may seem overnight <laughs> to others. Now, how, how have you, and this is the Unstoppable program, so it's important for us to hear and understand, how have you worked through some of the setbacks in your life? I mean, that's an awesome story. You go to school for one thing, you decide, you, you get a job and an internship. And we know internships, I'm, I'm, it wasn't paying, was it? It wasn't paying. No. No. Well, it was, it was for what I was doing, not much. It was like right. a stipend. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you decided to burn that ship to just pursue what you wanted to be. Yep. How have you handled some setbacks? There have been some setbacks along the way. What is what is your strategy of overcoming different setbacks? And if you care to share one, great. Um, what is your strategy in overcoming some setbacks? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing. It, one of your your first question about just soccer in general is actually one of the biggest ways I learned how to deal with setbacks, to be honest, because I jokingly say this, but as an athlete, as a as a especially as a successful black female athlete um, in a sport where there weren't many people, coaches, players that looked like myself, I dealt with a lot of adversity. Yeah. And um, the biggest thing that being an All-American actually showed me is that anything is possible. You know, that wasn't on my radar. There was a lot that was not on my radar, you know, to have the success that I did to be and have my name included with some of the best in the country. Um, and then some of the top players that are still playing to this day, it gave me the confidence of understanding that no matter how hard things may get, when it doesn't make sense, when you have those long days, emotional days, the adversity yeah, that you're, yeah. you're facing, it's now, you know, it's bigger picture. It's working out. And every once in a while, I find myself and I'm actually going in the midst of that right now, I, ironically, of those moments where you you just get that reminder that everything's going to be OK. Yeah. You know, like yeah. whatever doesn't make sense right now, whatever setbacks you feel like you're going through, it's teaching you something. It's helping you grow in some way. It's also even just making you more determined. I'm a very competitive, driven person. So when things aren't going well, it pushes me more out of my comfort zone to try to figure out, OK, what can I be doing right now? That's why the pandemic, I feel like I've grown so much out of my entire life, I've grown the most in this pandemic because I was so uncomfortable around it, yeah. you know? So it forces me to have to take a step back of, okay, what am I doing right now? And what else can I be doing? Or what else could I be learning or reading? I'm very big on just being a life learner. I love reading. I love writing. I love just taking in knowledge, having conversations with people. So that's the best way I can get through setbacks is to address it for what it is, take a deep breath, and then yeah keep moving, you know, find a way to pivot and keep moving. Cause I've understood and and learned to see firsthand that sometimes the rejection, the nose, all of that is a, the best thing for you, but also just really a a not yet, you know, where it's just not your time yet. And when things are meant for you, nothing is going to get in the way of that. Yeah. Yeah. I like what you said about pivot, you know, and, and, um, you know, you played sports your whole life. I was heavy into sports my entire life. I think it's, That's one thing that organized sports does teach us is that if that play is not working, you don't quit the game. You just run another one. You know, (laughs) you you, you find something that that works. You you pivot on it. What what are you learning about yourself? What are you learning right now? Right now, today, (laughs) what are we, August 17th? We August 17th? Yeah, something like that. I don't even know. Yeah. It's August 17th, 2021 is this, this recording. What are you learning right now? Whether it be about yourself or about what what are you learning? Just talk to me. What are you learning? Um, you know, I think when a lot. Um, actually, I've I've just tapped into a lot of new things. Um, so in full disclosure, I'm finishing up my first book. 
I right. am. Yeah, I'm. Will you come back and talk about it? We're going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a self help book, which I read a lot of self help books. So I actually wrote one. Um, okay. So I'm finishing that up. I'm I'm making some career changes and moves. I'm I'm just learning that, you know. Um, actually, a lot of what you just asked about before about yeah. just those rejections and those obstacles, but the resources that are out there. You know, I think we sometimes take for granted how much is really at our fingertips and how much we really know and have access to. So, you know, I, even that is something I've been definitely taking advantage of is just the resources to whether it's writing a book or doing more, like I'm growing, trying to grow my show and trying to yeah. grow my career and just, and just learn as much as I can about who I am professionally. So, you know, I think that's the biggest thing right now is as things are opening up around the pandemic, um, things are opening up for me as well. You know, I, I'm starting, things are, are, there is no normal. We're not going back to what things were before. So I'm actually in the process of figuring out what does my new normal look like? You know, what what's my schedule like? What type of work can I be doing now that we're getting back out at games and on the sidelines and everything? So um, there's a lot that I'm still currently learning, but I think if you were to ask me a week or two from now um, or moving forward, I'd have a different answer for you. Okay. Well, when you come back, you know, I mean, listen, we're always learning. So I, I, I'm sure I have a listener who's who's at a sticking point and just about to give up and quit, but we don't tolerate that. And we talk a lot about perseverance. You know, what? give us, give us uh, some advice on, on persevering through. What would you say to the young man, young woman, especially uh, speaking to a, a young woman who's just, you know, kind of feels like she's stuck. What, what would Renee say to her? Oh, a lot. Uh, I think the first <laughs> thing, <laughs> the first thing is that I think a lot of times we take set, setbacks and failure or rejections personal, yeah. you know, that it's something that we're not doing and that we're not doing enough of, or we're not smart enough or talented enough or socially, we're not beautiful enough, whatever it may be. But in reality, that door just wasn't meant for us to walk through. So if you're at a crossroads right now, that's a time where you're meant to be learning something about yourself. I know we keep touching on this point, but it's the truth. Yeah. If you're at a crossroads, if things don't make sense, the best thing you can do is take a step back and yeah. kind of like look at it from a different perspective or a different angle. You know, if sure. you feel like you're overwhelmed, definitely a time to refresh. I, I did that this summer. If anybody's been actively following my social media. They're like, where are you at now? I took this summer. I've been traveling more. I've been taking days off, which I never do. Um, and I've been <laughs> just taking time for myself because as you, if you're feeling overwhelmed, sometimes that means you have to also take a step back and do something for yourself. And it doesn't mean hop on a plane and fly to another part of the country. It could even mean that you need to Go get your nails done. Go get a massage. Go for a walk. Go, you know, go read the word or listen to some music. There's so many different ways to refresh. And yeah. you can never be at your best. You can never be prepared for when your name is called if you're not mentally and emotionally in a space where you're ready to receive that. I so like what you, you said. always I love have that. to be ready. Yes, I you always that. have to be ready. You never know when that opportunity is going to come and when somebody's going to take a chance on you. So you have to stay ready. But staying ready isn't just about having the right tools and talent, it's also mentally. Are yeah. you mature enough? Are you responsible enough? Are you ready to be able to step into whatever next chapter? So if you're at a crossroads, that means there's something else you may have to learn, refresh, figure out about yourself. Maybe there's more that you have to identify in your own personal identity. Yeah. Um, Self-love and self-care is major. So just in that crossroads, control what you can. Yeah. That's the biggest thing of what I'm trying to stress. Like, if everything around you feels like it's chaotic, start with just the core of what you can control. All right, mm -hmm. I'm going to take some time to eat better. That's something that goes, that's so simple, but goes a long way. Have three well-balanced, healthy meals in, in the day. Go drink more water, go for a walk, go exercise. Yeah. The little things that you can control make such a big difference. And even just your mindset and approach to those stressful situations, because yeah. you're now refreshed versus feeling stressed and yeah. feeling overworked or overwhelmed. So I have, again, I have a lot I could share because I've definitely personally been there in, in more ways than one. Well, you said a mouthful and you, listen, <laughs> you've blessed me. You've helped me. You've helped the listeners. So you're a big reader. I'm a big reader. What are you reading right now that you could recommend? Yeah, actually, I just, so I've been trying this year to make sure that I am um, 
and I've, I've dropped the ball a little bit, but I've been trying to read almost a book. I started off reading a book per month, the first few months okay. of 2021. And then I slowed down around the summer, but right now okay. I'm actually reading Don't Drop the Mic by Bishop T.D. Jakes. Okay. It's very nice. And it's about like how you can use your words to connect with people and uh, to be able to convey a message by understanding who your audience is, who, yeah. what they what they need versus yeah. just what you want to say. So that's it's a really good book. And it's beyond just discussing any sort of like speaking role, but just in general, the best right. ways to connect and and navigate through. You said so. something um, earlier and I don't want to gloss over it. You said, listen, you have to be ready when your name is called. And, and sometimes when, when I, I push reading, you know, I'm a writer, you're a writer, we're readers. And when I talk to people, I, I, I don't read a lot. I'm like, well, listen, get audio books because it, you, your oh, mind yeah. has to be ready for when that opportunity opens up. I, I don't think mm-hmm. that if we're going to be unstoppable, there's no point when we can just stand still and mark time. You know, we, we have to be ready. And I'm not talking about, like like you said, uh, stressing yourself out, but be ready. Be, be ready. Be ready. Mm-hmm. You know what I used to actually do because I grew up and a lot of us as kids have this mindset. Oh, I don't like to read. And I was definitely one of those. Look, in school, when we had those assignments to read, I was using Spark Notes, Cliff Notes, whatever (laughs) I could. I was not reading the book. But it's different now because I'm choosing the book that I want to read. So what I actually started doing to get back or get into the love of reading, I started listening to audible books, audio books that I was I would be. I remember driving in my car. Um, to Harrisburg and all these different places and literally just listening instead of listening to music yeah. I'd be listening to a book I'd be reading I'd be yeah. reading yeah. and that actually from there helped me feel more confident in reading and I just started carrying a book around like yeah. if I'm going to go get my car worked on or if I'm going to go wherever I just started carrying a book with me and just finding times to read even if it's just one page sure. and then it became okay I, I I was now able to sit down and knock out a couple chapters and and yeah. then I was flying through a book in a month like it just yeah. from there became a lot easier but even reading learning studying that's something else that I do a lot yeah. of is there's LinkedIn and all these different tools that you can study your craft yeah of just being able to hear other people discuss it, kind of like we're doing right now. So that's even something that once you just take control of that, reading does help in so many ways, but obviously just to feed your mind. And no matter how old you are, you have to keep reading and learning. Someone once said, someone much smarter than me said, dig the ditch before you dig the well before you need the water. Mm. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> I like your that. Like you don't you wait. <laughs> don't wait. Just keep on digging. You, you know. So um is soccer season upon us? Soccer I'm, I'm a football guy. Is soccer season upon us? Soccer now? and football are in the same season, yeah. Same season. So, well, college soccer is starting. Uh professional soccer is basically year round. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. There's a ton of games. So I don't know much about soccer. Um, but I do watch a show on Apple TV, and I'm gonna be honest with everybody. The TV that I do watch is limited. I fold around and start watching Ted Lasso. I don't um, even know what that is. It's a he was a college football coach who got hired. It's a half hour show. It's pretty good. It's really good. I had 20 Emmy nominations or something. He's oh, wow. a college football coach that got hired to coach a soccer team in England, <laughs> a premier soccer team in England. So it's, oh, it's really good. I have heard of that. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm learning about soccer there. I'm learning that the field is called a pitch. Am I right? Yes. You know what the most confusing part about soccer is that there's different terms in the United States versus in other countries. And okay. I don't know why. And I don't know when somebody's going to realize that maybe we can unite these. But yes, like in the United States, it's a game. Other countries, it's a match. It's right. a field versus a pitch. It's soccer versus football. I have no right. idea why. But now do you do any broadcasting overseas or all your broadcasting here? You know what? One of the greatest things around the pandemic that I was able to do was I started broadcasting international soccer games. So I was doing like that? Champions League games. I was doing games in like Nicaragua and all over the world. And it was it was so cool to be a part of because I was yeah. doing the English version of the broadcast and it was incredible. I mean, I was now virtually in these other parts of the world and <laughs> talking about players and and that opened up a whole other set of challenges yeah. in itself between the yeah. names and and everything else, but it, I was doing play by play and it was so cool. So, yeah. um yeah, I mean, the the thing about soccer is it's 
it's loved and appreciated much more in other countries outside yeah. of ours where right. people grow up not only watching it, but even playing it. You yeah. know, they're outside. It's like the same way that we play basketball or football during family cookouts and everything like that. Right. Like that's they're playing soccer all the time. You know, they're in, mm. the, in the backyard or outside or using whatever they can to play soccer. So it's really cool to see the love of the game in other parts of the world. Um, and just the way they are, they're so excited about it. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. something, honestly, you would love soccer if you really get into it. It's I, I, a, lot listen, of cool, I, so, I, a lot of great players and things like that. Watch. I watch, I watch the world cup. Okay. I watch the world. I don't know what's going on, but I watch the world. You know, what's fascinating to me about soccer and, and is that you can run like that for just two hours, three hours, you know, football. Yeah. I get a break oh, every yeah. second, every 25 seconds, yep. I can take a break. But in soccer, you're running constantly. I do appreciate the athleticism. I don't understand it all the time, but I do appreciate the athleticism. And um, so I do watch it. I, I do watch the world. I, I watch the major things. I don't watch, okay. I probably should I get watch yes. the smaller. A lot things. of people are the are those uh, types of fans. The World Cup is heavily watched, but it is, it is an incredible sport because unlike basketball and football, like you mentioned, there's no stop, there's no timeout. There's no stops. There's no real substitutions. I mean, you have only a few players getting subbed out at the end of the half and you are literally, I mean, I've played 90 minutes where you're just running up and down the field and running all and, over. And let me tell you, let me tell you before we get off this broadcast, <laughs> those soccer players are the greatest actors I've ever seen in my life. No, I don't oh know why. It's men, men soccer players are the worst. The flopping is the ridiculous. flopping is Oh ridiculous. my, it kills me because it's not necessary. I'm like, did he just get hit by a car? Did somebody just kick his ankle? By and they lay car? there until they get the call. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great talking to you. Where can my listeners find you? Thank you for talking to us about perseverance and, and just your story and sharing it with you. How can my listeners follow you? Where I know you're everywhere, but, but share with us. Let them know. Yeah, I'm all over. I'm everywhere um, at Renee P. Washington. So I've tried to be consistent with my names across yes. all platforms. Uh, really my sure. website, ReneePWashington.com, honestly, is what houses literally everything. But I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, Renee P. Washington or Renee P. Wash on Twitter. And my show, Beyond the Headlines, is connected to that as well with new episodes each week. I actually have one this evening, too. But it has okay. been a pleasure having you. Um, on my show and now I'm happy to have had a chance to be on yes. yours and, and chat with you and have this great conversation. So thank you so much, my dear friend, um, yeah, for, yeah. Take, you know, allowing me to join you on your show. And I want you to come back when that book gets when that book gets released, because we want to talk about the book and I want my my listeners to grab the book. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and get that. Ready, set, grow is the name of it. So. Ready, set, grow. OK. I need well, an advanced copy. To. I need an advanced <laughs> copy. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, the process of writing books, you know, it's definitely not easy. So I'm no, in, uh, figuring no. out publishing, uh, you know, going about actually publishing it, but it is done. So yeah, it's it's Fingers more than crossed. a notion. It's more than a notion, but <laughs> yeah. it will be successful. I'm sure it is. And I'm sure you have yeah. many more books beside you. But guys, you've been listening to the Unstoppable program. My, my name is uh, Ralph Graves Jr. Listen, go to my website, ralphgravesjr.com. Become part of the Unstoppable community. Pick up my book, Unstoppable. And um, let's just grow. Let's be unstoppable together. Renee, thanks for coming. Hey, guys, I'll check you out next time. God bless.